and I'm going to click the button. All right. Thank you very much for obliging me for a second to uh, to get that webinar or get that recording going. Today's webinar is on dog bite prevention. <clears throat> and uh, I want to start out by doing a poll. So if you wouldn't mind just for a second, I'll open that poll up. Just two quick questions and we'll hit these as fast as we as fast as we can. Folks are, are diving in and getting started. So the questions are pretty simple. Have you ever been threatened or chased by a dog? And the second one, have you ever been bit by a dog? Let that poll run for, for just a minute. I gave Doug and Bren, I caught him, I caught him cold on the first webinar that we did today. Any details you want to share? Any thoughts on your on your dog interactions? I bet a couple times. And you know, sometimes it just you don't even see it coming. You know, dogs will sneak up behind you and uh, and bite you from behind and and you just don't even know it's coming. Yeah. That's those have been the most surprising ones for me, where it's like, what the heck just happened? Yeah. <laughs> I had one where this dog came up to me and uh, and <laughs> walked up to me, and so like a smart like a smart kid I was, I was a teenager at the time. I reached out my hand to <laughs> tell him hi, and he swallowed it. <laughs> <laughs> dog just grabbed a hold, and and uh, that was definitely a definitely a surprise to me. We're gonna wrap up this poll, and. won't let me wrap it up by myself. It's, it has to let everybody have enough time. All right, let's see if we can make this work. All right, we will share the share the poll results here. So about 61% of people or 61 of people 61% of people who um, who gave an answer said yes, I've been threatened or chased by a dog and about 11% said no. And on who has been bit um, Let's see, 44 to 28%, 44% 44 of people re, re, uh, um, report being bit. Um, that's, a, that's, a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good chunk of people that have had a negative interaction with a dog. And for a lot of us, we may have been bit by our own dog. Um, and uh, and we may, it may have been a neighbor's, it may have been a friend's. Um, and it's a pretty startling thing that happens, and we might have to deal with that through our occupations, through the things that we do at work. And what we're what we're trying to do today is help prevent those things. So let's dive in and talk about um, talk about these these issues that we have with dogs. So the CDC reports that there are about 70 million dogs in the in the U.S. Um, and about almost five 4.7 million people bit, receive a bite uh, each year in the U.S. About 800,000 of those need medical attention, and there are 20 to 30 fatalities each year from a dog bite or a dog attack. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy statistics there. Um, who are the most commonly bit groups of people? Um, young kids and seniors. And I guess we can try to read a little bit into the statistics there. Um, kids, I definitely can see how that would happen. Kids are trusting, and sometimes they may trust a dog that shouldn't be trusted. Um, they're also shorter, and uh, that may put them more at risk of uh, of having so ha being bitten. Um, each year at the trust, uh, we average about. I went back about ten years, and it was an average of about thirty bites per year um, over the last ten years. Fix a little problem here. Um, well, the question is, I wonder how many of those bites are, are criminals bitten by canine officer dogs? That's a good question. And I don't, I didn't dive into the statistics enough to know um, if that is, uh, if, if, if those are included, I would expect that they are. I know that, uh, I know that of those 30 bites per year that we have at the trust, a significant chunk of those are actually canine officers um, biting their handlers or biting somebody in in training, um, you know, we take a dog and we train them to to bite, 
Um, and sometimes they sometimes they literally bite the hand that feeds them, and and so those are definitely part of those uh, those statistics that we have. Um, so to start with, we just need to accept a reality that any dog can bite. A lot of a lot of owners will will say, "No, not my dog. My dog's great. He wa he wouldn't bite. She's a great dog." Uh, the reality is, I don't care who your dog is <laughs> and, and and how great they are. They all have the potential to bite under the right circumstances, and so we have to accept that. Um, and uh, and I've got to tell you. Some of the smaller dogs um, are really more apt to bite than maybe a maybe a larger breed. I think back of to the the number of dog bites that I've had in in my life. Um, the uh, the scale definitely tips towards the small dog, um, the the little yappy dog that will bite you on the ankle when you're not paying attention. Um, so let's go through and talk about some occupations. Uh, many of the people that work for organizations insured by the trust, me uh, members of the trust, are, are doing these types of tasks. Utility workers going out and reading meters, animal control officers, mosquito abatement folks going back into some, somebody's yard to treat uh, a backyard pond or something like that. Um, law enforcement personnel, either dealing with the animals because that's the call or they go into somebody's home to, to do whatever their task is and there happens to be an animal there, fire or EMS the same way. You have a, you have a situation at somebody's, somebody's home, somebody's injured. Well, those animals can become just as agitated as the people that are there when there's a, when there's a problem like that happening. Um, so the problem, one of the or compounding problems with this, are not all dogs are the same. Every dog has its own personality and they don't talk. They don't tell us what their intentions are. Unless we're able to really read what they're giving us, um, we really don't know what's, what's on their mind and whether they mean us harm or not. Um, other challenges that go along with it, we really don't control our environment when, uh, when we're out at somebody's home, um, in their yard, et cetera, et cetera, we, we don't have any control over what that environment is. And that makes it, that puts, uh, tips the scales into the favor of the dog and not, it, not for us. Um, and in many cases, the owners are not very helpful. Um, they justify away their dogs or they say, oh, my dog's fine. He won't bite. He, um, you know, he's great. And sometimes they can literally sig the dog on us. And that's a, and that's a definitely another potential that we, that we have to deal with. So it's a bad problem that we have and we've got to figure out what the solution is. Well, here are the things that we can do to minimize the chance that we get bit. <clears throat> Um, number one is we need to understand dog behavior. Dogs are uh, dogs are an animal, and they have their their own characteristics. They have things that are that are bred into them, and different breeds are a little bit different. But we've got to be able to look at a dog in a short amount of time and make some decisions. Our situational awareness is is really important as well as long along with being prepared and taking confident action. So let's dive into each one of those. So looking at dogs, um, every breed that's out there um, is descended from a wolf, um, a wild animal that uh, exhibits a pack mentality. They hunt as a pack and they kill animals uh, for prey. And we need to understand that every one of those breeds um, at one point has, has uh, been a wolf. And, uh, and they still have that wolf mentality, that pack mentality, deep down in their mind. Now we may, uh, you know, you may say, "Oh, not my dog. They're great." And I have a, I have a very tame dog, but on, but on, but given the right situation, he can be a wolf. So let's think about that pack mentality. How do how do wolves hunt? They they hunt in a pack. They surround their prey, and the alpha dog gets in front. Of that uh, of that animal, and and the job of the alpha dog is to keep that animal busy, to keep their attention 
while the rest of the dogs, alpha and, and uh, beta and all the way down to omega, depends on how big your pack is, those dogs surround and they look for an opportunity and they sneak on, sneak in and they take a bite. And they'll, and, and they'll take a bite of those, uh, of the back legs of that animal and they, and they just keep working the, do, working the animal until they can get it under control. Well, we, that's important when we think about how a dog may bite us and, and the tactics that, that, that they may use. Whether they're really having, whether they really have ill intent for us, or whether they maybe are just scared, um, we catch them off guard. All of these things will come out. Okay. So another thing we need to look at is the dog's posture. What does the dog tell me by its posture? Is um, is a dog showing uh, showing you their teeth? Is that something that lets me know whether that dog is aggressive or not? It may or may not. My dog, I'll show you a picture of picture of my dog, Jake, <laughs> here in a minute. And when Jake sees me, when I come home and he and he walks out to tell me to tell me hi, he curls up his nose and it looks like and, and it looks similar to this dog, maybe not with a, not with his mouth quite as far open, but it looks an awful lot like this dog. Um, it could be a threatening pose. That's not what he means by that. What is something that is really, really consistent among, among dogs are, are other parts of the posture. Here are four different uh, postures that each of us should keep into mind. Subordinate, submissive, aggressive, confident, and dominant aggressive. Let's look at each one of those. Subordinate, here's Jake. <clears throat> so when I when I go to see Jake, he'll roll over on his back and say, "Rub my belly." You know, he's very subordinate. He shows me his his belly. A dog that is aggressive is not going to show you show you their belly. Um, he's uh, this uh, Jake is you know his mouth open, his whole body is moving. He he wags his entire body when when I walk up. Okay, what is this dog telling me? This dog's telling me, "Hey, I'm your friend." Submissive aggressive posture in a dog is a little bit different. We need to keep an eye on this dog. This is probably the quickest dog to bite you. Um, and you can see in this dog posture, what's its body doing? Its, its, its posture is back. It's leaning back, tails down, back is bent, ears are back. Um, and, and we've probably all seen a dog like this, little rapid bark, panic behavior. This dog's kind of scared, but it can lash out. This is one that is one of the quickest to bite. And a lot of times they'll bite you when your back is turned. When I talk about those little yappy dogs, the ones that bit me on the ankle when I was, when I was visiting my, my elderly neighbor, um, as I walked out of the house, this dog had been, been barking and, and exhibiting this kind of posture while I was there. And as I was headed out the door, it took a snap at my ankle um, because, because it had an opportunity. This is, a, this is a dog we've really got to keep an eye on. They're going to take action quick. All right, just another picture of a similar posture. Confident posture. This dog is confident. Its head is up, its ears are forward. Think of the body position. What is, what is the dog telling you? Well, if your body is leaning forward, it says, hey, I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> meaner than you are i'm i'm confident i'm gonna i'm telling you to get out of my yard or i don't want you here tail may be wagging chest is forward they may greet you just before they bite your hand but this dog is most of the time is if there's a threat they will defend themselves um, they may not be as quick to bite as that first posture that we looked at but there are the second posture um, but if they but if they feel threatened they will lash out to to defend themselves or their their territory this dog here is also very uh, this posture um is very dangerous this is what's called a dominant aggressive this is a this dog is telling you i'm i'm gonna take you out i'm going to i'm going to hurt you whatever um forward posture scruffs up this dog is telling you i am i am into it look at it look at the ears the ears are forward um, this dog may bounce off the fence, may jump up and down, may hit the door. 
uh, may jump into the uh, jump into the window of the, of the home. Um, and they don't want to let you into their yard or into the home. They're going to let you know what what they are. This is a very dangerous dog, and we need to take appropriate actions based on that. Okay. <clears throat> so those are the those are the basic postures. Let's look at some dog behavior. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't under wouldn't uh, wouldn't really think of this, but you're more likely to bitten to be bitten when the owner is present than when the dog is there alone. It, and we have to go back to that pack behavior um, to, to think why this might be. Well, a dog is more confident if they have reinforcements. So if I've got, uh, if, if I've got another dog there helping me out, there's a lot better chance that somebody's going to, to get bit. Okay? Um, they may let you in the yard. They may be happy when that when the owner comes out. Then they're going to go to work on you because they are because they feel confident. Hey, I've got my, I've got my my owner here to back me up. So take a look at this picture here. This looks really cute, right? Looks like a like a just a really nice picture. But if we look really closely at this dog. The dog is giving off some real signs that it is that it is getting close to biting, um, to lashing out at this child. And we might be on the way to the, to the emergency room for a child that's been bit. What, what's the dog telling? Wide-eyed stare, ears pulled back. Um, you, can, you can see that this dog is, is tense um, and it doesn't know what this child means. Okay. Look at the dog's posture. Look at what the dog is telling you. Okay, so one of the things that we have to do is keep our situational awareness up. I bumbled into a dog one day, walked up a walk up to a home um, on a sidewalk, and this dog, um, which was the closest I've ever seen to <laughs> describing a, a junkyard dog, this was a really really mangy, bad looking dog. And it didn't see me walking up the sidewalk, and I didn't see it there until we were both in close proximity to each other. And uh, and the dog the dog saw me, scared me. I, I think we saw each other about the same time, and it came out um, because it felt threatened, and it came at me. And I ran out of that yard, and I leaped the gate, <laughs> and uh, and we were all we were all okay at the end of the day. Um, but the thing that I did wrong is I didn't. I didn't have good situational awareness. I didn't assess my sight to see if there was a dog there. What do I do? Well, I should have rattled the gate. I should have made some noise to let that dog know that I know that I was in the area. That should be what we do um, each time. Assess the sight. Is there a dog here? Well, if there's a dog bowl, if there's a dog bowl on the porch or in the yard, if there if the yards uh, you know has tracks or feces or um, whatever it may be that would lead us to believe that there's a dog there, then we pay attention to that. Try to get the dog to come out and let, and, uh, let you know what their intentions are. Think about the area, assess the area that we're walking in. I may be going to read a meter or, uh, or access a yard for whatever reason. Is the fence high enough to keep that dog in if, if the dog really wants to get out? Will the door on the house hold? Um, you know, if we've got a we've got a little screen door there, is that going to stop? Is that going to stop that big dog from getting through it? You know, maybe not. What are my escape routes? How do I get out of here? And then assess the owner. This may be a recurring problem. This this may be a dog that we've had issues with in past in past times uh, when I've been here. And in those cases, we definitely need to definitely take appropriate action. And that sometime may be bringing in animal control or your law enforcement there to control not only the dog, but the, but the owner, depending on you know, what's really going on there. All right. One simple technique that we, that we may do is we're going up to knock on a door and it looks like there may be a dog there. You can simply put your toe on the door. And what will that do? Well, that may stop a dog. You know, the dog will bounce off of that door, but it will stop them from, from knocking the door open. Even if the door is a little bit ajar, if you've got your foot there, um, so you can talk to the person through the crack in the door, but keep the, keep the dog from forcing their way through and biting you. Many of the worst, worst interactions happen right there at that front door 
in the first few seconds after, after you knock on the door. If, if you see a dog fight, something that happens um, periodically in neighborhoods when you, get, when you get some stray dogs around and dogs are fighting, our natural inclination is I wanna stop this fight. I don't want these animals to get injured. Um, and particularly if it's your dog that's, uh, that's maybe in a fight with another dog. Um, but that's one of the worst things that we can do is to intervene, is to dive in and try to pull these dogs apart. You may get bitten by your own dog um, because in a fight, all things, you know, nothing, <laughs> nothing is barred, no holds are barred in a dog fight. So how do I handle this? Well, you can, you can get some assistance from animal control, but a lot of times they're, you know, they're minutes away. Um, use some tools. You've got a you've got a shovel. You've got a rake. You've got something like that that we can get in between these animals. Um, one of the best things that I've found to to break up a dog fight is a bucket of water or a hose. You can you can spray them down. Um, but just don't try to get in between there because if your hand gets in between those dogs, um, you're going to get bit. All right. One of the things we need to do as we go out is we need to be prepared. Don't bumble into that dog. Um, shake the gate, pay attention to the signs. Um, keep something between you and that dog, whether it's, the, whether it's a fence or an object that you carry with you. Um, the safest route is by a wall or by a fence. Keep something to your back. Remember back on those, how those wolves um, attack. They're gonna come in from behind or from the side as, as one dog is, is keeping you busy. We need to read what the signs are, not only what's going on in the neighborhood. If there's a literal sign that says beware of dog, um, let's take that at, take that at, its, at uh, what, it's, what it says. Um, but also look at the other signs. Look at the posture the dog is giving you, the owner, and all of those things. Don't trust the owners. Many times a, an owner will say, ah, that dog's fine. He won't bite you. Um, well, don't trust that person. I'm not saying they're being dishonest. I'm just saying that people have a lot more trust in their animals than I would. And, uh, and many times a different person comes into that environment, they, they may find out their dog actually does bite. So let's say I've got some business to do. I need to, I need to go in and, and uh, let's say it's an EMS thing. I've got somebody injured inside of a home and I need to go in and, and help assess that patient but there's a dog there and the dog is agitated. Um, what do I do? I ask the, I ask the homeowner or the uh, person there to control that dog and just let them know, I can't do my job until that dog is controlled. So please put the dog in, a, put the dog in, a, in another room and don't allow that dog to get out, put the dog on a chain, put them in the kennel, whatever it may be to get that under control and just let them know, I can't do my job until you've done your job to control that animal. <clears throat> what do I do if I'm facing um, a dog that, that is going to attack me? Um, I bumbled into the dog or, or was surprised by that and all of a sudden here it is. What do I do? Well, here, here's a list of things that we, can, that we can do. And like Doug said to start with, sometimes these things just happen. Um, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even know the dog was there and all of a sudden it had a hold of my hand. Um, but if I've got an opportunity to do something, here's what we can do. My posture is just as important as the posture that the dog is giving off. You can see that dogs are telling us a lot by their posture. Well, we tell them by our posture, what we need. Am I submissive? If I'm submissive, they're a lot more likely to come after me. If I'm dominant and I let them know, Hey, I'm alpha. I'm going to uh, I'm I'm going to reduce the risks that I am that I'm bit. Face the threat. Don't turn your back or don't turn to the side for that threat. It's just like a grizzly bear. Um, if I come on to uh, come onto a bear while I'm hiking, I'm going to back away. But I'm going to keep my face to that animal uh, to let them know that that I'm not a prey animal that uh, is running away and that they should they should pursue and take me down. Um, always keep something between you and the dog if possible. Uh, whether it's a fence, um, it's the owner, uh, whatever it may be, it could just be a tool bag that I've got in my hand or something that I can pick up in the yard 
to keep between me and the dog. Be very, be very commanding in the words that you use. Outruns a dog, they're after me. I'm going to use words like no, sit, out, you know, and, and uh, you know, maybe a pointing gesture, be careful with gestures, but, um, but if this dog is used to commands, that may, that may take them out of the, the attack mode and back into more of a submissive mode. So be very, very strong in your posture and in the commands that, we, that you use. Um, be, uh, be careful with, with fast gestures and putting your hands uh, or parts of your body out to, for the dog to have something to grab. You can see in this picture where, the, where, this, where this man is moving along the wall to keep safe and you know moving towards the door or moving towards the gate. All right. We said in here, put something between you and the dog, give the dog something to bite that's not your hands. So so I've got a tool bag in my hand or I've got uh, or I've got a bite stick in my hand. Um, I can put that out. Brent, would you show us the the bite stick? Um, I forgot to pick that up at the at the office, yes. having Brent show this. Here's the bite uh, stick. Yeah, tell us about it. It's got the, it's got a tennis ball here on the end of it, and uh, it's got a rope that comes through it. So at the end, you have a little handle you can put your hand through and grab onto the stick here. It's made of PVC, and it just gives you something that the, the dog can can bite instead of your hand. Yeah, it's just a really, uh, it's it's really light. It's something that you can carry along. This is something that people in in utility industry will, may use. They're they're going reading meters or or making deliveries, something like that. This is a great tool to help us um, to help us with a dog. And you say, well, what does that do? I can't whack a dog much with that. Well, you can a little bit. Um, the reality is, what a bite stick does is we give the dog something to bite. We we hold out that tennis ball and the dog will bite it and they keep biting. And so in the situation where I'm walking through a yard, dog comes out to bite me. I, I point the bite stick at them. They grab that, they grab that tennis ball. I can back out of that situation. And once you're, once you're on the other side of the gate, then you can get your bite stick back or not. And, uh, but, but we've just prevented you from, from getting a bite and kept you in a, in a good situation. So give the dog something by, to bite besides your hand. Something like an umbrella can also startle and, uh, and make dogs a lot less likely to bite you. You can pop that umbrella and just, uh, just open and close it. And some, some umbrellas make a loud, uh, make a little more of a loud sound. You can just pop that and a lot of dogs will be, um, will be kind of scared off by that. Um, so if I'm facing a threat, a few things that I can do, I can stomp my feet. Maybe you've got a dog um, that's, that's just kind of moving around you and it's letting you know that, it, you know, it's kind of sizing you up. Stomp your feet. Maybe not big, you don't even have to do big stomps, but it lets the dog know that there's a potential threat in you that you're not, you're not going to take any guff. Dog's feet are very tender. Um, when you look at all of the dog's anatomy and, and, and what part of the dog is probably the most vulnerable or has the most nerve endings, um, that's the dog's feet. And they do not want to have their, their feet stepped on. I actually uh, attended a dog bite prevention course several years ago. And, uh, and they did live testing or did live demonstrations with police dogs, canine officers. And they had people in the in all the garb. And so as this dog is is biting this guy, he reaches out with his foot to step on the dog's foot. He wasn't actually going to do it. But as soon as he did that, the dog just rolled over. Um, he did not want his feet to be to be injured. And so by stomping your feet, you let that dog know that hey, I've got feet, I've got shoes on and I'm willing to use those. And that in many cases will let it, will keep a dog back. Give the dog something to bite, use whatever you've got, improvise. I'm in somebody's yard and all of a sudden the dog, the, the owner opens the door and the dog runs out and there's a shovel leaning up against the fence. 
don't be a, don't be afraid to uh, improvise with the tools that you have. What about pepper spray, hitting the dog, using lethal methods? Um, well, uh, you know, anything goes when, a, when an attack happens, but be really conscious about what you use, pepper spray or mace or things like that. If I got to go back to that same, that same yard again around that dog, that dog's going to remember. I've seen this personally as, as uh, I was a child, um, the UPS delivery guy sprayed our dogs with, uh, with some pepper spray or something. And for years, they hated that brown truck. And when he would come, he, when he would come around, those dogs were, those dogs would go crazy because they did not like, like that guy because of that. So think about, think before using those types of things, striking. If I, am I going to um, hit a dog? So a dog bites me on the hand and I, and I hit that dog, what's it going to do? Well, it'll drive their teeth further into my hand. So what, what can I use to, to fight off that dog? Well, we already talked about stepping on their feet, kicking them in the stomach, grabbing a hold of their throat. If there's a, if, if they have a, uh, if they have a collar on, grab that collar and start twisting the collar um, to, uh, to put pressure on their neck. That may, that may be able to, uh, you may be able to stop a bite from there. Using lethal means, if you're, uh, you know, an officer, you have, have those means available. Um, you know, you've got to be really, got to be really, really wise in how to use those because of, uh, because of close proximity to other people. Be smart about, about that. All right. What if you're bit? Like I said, go for the throat or the collar, grab that collar and, uh, and twist around. Um, let's see. Dogs would go crazy. Please careful, clarify. Would they act aggressively or threatening? Would they keep their distance and get loud? I think you're, I think you're referring to my dogs in the, uh, and the uh, UPS guy. Um, I was, I'm trying to remember back when I was eight, <laughs> what the dog behavior, they would, uh, um, I would say, I would say aggressive and threatening um, it was, it was more the way they were. Um, let's see, um, keep hold of the dog. This is a, this is a tough balance. So a dog comes out, bites your hand. What do I do? Well, what, one thing that I want to pre uh, prevent under all circumstances is me falling down. Because if I go down, then the chance that that dog gets a hold of, uh, of you know, more important parts of my anatomy, my throat or, um, or my face or head, um, that's, that could be a lot worse for me. You know, a dog bite on a hand is a bad thing, but a dog biting, biting your throat can, could be lethal. Uh, so I, I want to stay, uh, I want to stay vertical, but if I can keep a hold of that dog, it's biting my hand, um, but keep a hold and back up towards safety, get to that gate. And maybe I can get that, uh, maybe I can get that dog off of my hand when my body's on the other side of the other side of the gate. Um, but, uh, but be, be very careful that you don't fall down because that can make things much worse. So what if you're bit? Definitely get to get to safety. Wash that bite with soap and water. Um, if the skin's broken, get medical attention right away. Um, especially as you know, this may be your dog, and you know they've got all their shots and and all of those things. But if I'm dealing with somebody else's dog, I really don't know what's happened with that with that animal as far as vaccinations and and uh, whether they're ill or anything like that. So I want to get some attention for that. We need to report all dog bites, um, and you say, "Well, I don't really want to cause any problems." We need to report dog bites because um, because this dog, you may be just one of a of a long list of of dog bites that this animal has has perpetrated, and uh, and it needs to be controlled in one way or another. So um, so definitely report these things, um, and their you know organizations track this and and. Uh, you know, whether it's for statistics or because this dog's been a problem in the class, let's report it. Okay, just to wrap up, maintain your spirit, your situational awareness. You guys have, uh, you're out there working in, in these neighborhoods and different areas. Um, and I know it's hard. 
but constantly be looking around and saying, what are the risks that, that uh, I'm facing here? There's, hey, there's a dog dish in the, in the backyard there I can see, or a dog house, I'm probably facing that. Use confident posture as you're working around dogs. Use command words. Don't ever turn your back on a hazard like that um, and keep something between you and the dog. The big thing is let's be smart to start with and not ever get, in, get into that situation um, you know, because we identified the problem. But if you do find yourself there, take that confident action and, and, uh, and get, your, get yourself to safety. Don't be afraid to, uh, to talk to an owner and say, you need to control your dog now. And, uh, and, and, and be very definitive in, in doing that. Okay, I think that's all I had to cover on this presentation today. If you have any questions or comments, type those into the chat box or the, or the Q&A. Um, and uh, we'll answer those this time. Doug and Brent, anything to add? Nothing to add. Great job, Jason. What they have to add is, Jason, you went long. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a clock. Normally, when I have two screens, I have a clock. Uh, apologize for going long on that, folks. I, I had no idea. I actually thought I was going faster than the first one. Um, thanks, folks, for, for attending here. Uh, be safe out there um, around, around these animals. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, definitely give us a call or an email, and we're, we're happy to help out. Um, and just a reminder, we're going to dive right into the, I'll start up the, the aerial lift safety webinar right after we wrap this one up. Um, but if you, if you want to attend that one and you haven't signed up, send me an email to jason at utahtrust.gov and I will do that right away before we start up the next one. And uh, with that, everybody go out and have a safe day. Thanks.